What if you remembered the future? We are not talking time travel in this episode, we're talking about Arrival, which I think is one of my favourite movies out there. Uh, one of my favourite First Contact Alien movies, for sure. I love how they did the heptopods in this movie. I just feel like it was pretty unique, right? You know, it, it was something we kind of hadn't seen before, where it was a proper thought out idea around like something that is very alien. <laughs> not just like humanoid alien, but actually legitimately really alien. Anyway, <laughs> this is a great movie. I love it so much. But what I want to talk about today is about Arrival and how it uses time or our perception of time. And again, it is not a time travel story, even though you might think it is. Uh, before I get into it, I just want to say if you have been watching my videos and if you like them, firstly, thank you. Secondly, subscribe. <laughs> That would be great. Uh, join and like and engage and do the things. One day I'll get better at doing this part of it. Um, yeah, it will. Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Arrival. Right. What happens now? Arrival. In Arrival, Louise learns an alien language and it completely changes how she experiences time. Now, she doesn't just know what's coming up, she remembers it. Her daughter, her death, Ian leaving, none of it has actually happened yet, but she sees it all like it already has and she doesn't try to stop it. No, she just lives through it. But she does this not because she wants to or not because she's choosing to, but it's because that's what remembering the future means in this film. So the real question, it's not why doesn't she change it, it's could she. So let's start with how time actually works in the film. So the heptopods, the aliens, uh, they don't experience time as a sequence. For them, there's no beginning, no middle, no end. Everything happens at once. It's simultaneous. Their language reflects that then. So we get something that's non-linear, that's circular, designed for communicating events that already have known outcomes. So when Louise learns their language, her perception changes. Now she doesn't just speak differently, she starts to think differently. And eventually, she starts to experience time the way that the heptopods do. Not by passing through it, but perceiving it as a whole, where the future becomes as accessible and as fixed as the past. And this, it's pretty much what gives the film like the emotional weight that we all feel at the end because it's not about foresight, it's about memory. And memory isn't something that you control. So Louise doesn't choose to have a daughter who will die. She just remembers that she did. And so from her point of view, she, she's already in it. This then reframes the whole story really. Arrival isn't about changing the future or trying to change the future. It's about living inside one that's already been written. So really, we're talking about free will. Now there's a scene in the film that makes this pretty clear. It's the moment in the future with General Shang at the party. So he walks right up to Louise and he thanks her for the call that changed everything, that saved everyone. And Louise is like, sorry, what? <laughs> From her perspective, she hasn't actually made that call yet. So he tells her what she said. He leans in and gives her the exact words that she will need to use. Words that she will then later repeat in what for him is the past. It's a time loop, right? sort of. She hears the words in the future, she says them in the past, but she does that because it already, it, it already happened. There's no deliberation here, there's no like weighing her options, should she, shouldn't she, what, what does she need to do? She's not deciding what to say, she's remembering what she said in the past and the future. In this version of time, this is how causality works in the movie, not in reality, of course. But Louise isn't choosing her actions. She's playing out events that are already a part of her memory. She's not altering the future or altering the past. She's just living through a fixed version of it in a 
non-linear way. If you learn it when you really learn it, you begin to perceive time the way that they do. So, so you can see what's to come. But time, it, it isn't the same for them. It's non-linear. So the question is, can language really reshape how you think? Now, no. <laughs> Learning a new language doesn't actually give you visions of the future. I mean, that part's pretty clear. I think we can all agree on that. But the idea that language can affect your thoughts, well, that's partly real. Now, the movie is playing specifically with something that's called the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis or linguistic relativity. Now, the general idea here is that the language you speak can influence how you think. Now, not what you're allowed to think, but how you categorize and process information. But here's the important part about this. The effects that are discussed are small, they are very hotly debated, and they are very much context dependent. The truth is that most cognitive scientists do not think that language can fundamentally alter how you perceive things, and the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis in general is not well accepted or recognized in the community. There's not really a whole lot of evidence for it. Um, there's obviously no evidence that learning a language could ever rewire your brain to remember the future. <laughs> But what Arrival is doing here, it is, is taking this real, very debated idea from linguistics and pushing it deep into science fiction because it's thinking about what if a language was so different, so completely alien, that learning it didn't just change your vocabulary, but it changed how your brain experienced time. Because we're not talking about another human language, we are talking about an entirely different concept outside of what we know. So this obviously isn't going to happen in the real world, but it is a clever extension of what's a real scientific debate. And it's what lets the film science or ground its science fiction in something that feels plausible, which I hope you guys know is what I love the most about good sci-fi. Your science fiction, like your science doesn't have to be accurate, it just has to be used in a clever way or in a way that makes sense to what the real science says or hypothesizes or could potentially lead to. And I think that this works really well for the movie. So long as we're all clear that the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis doesn't really kind of work in the way that the movie is portraying it. But we're talking about aliens. Anyway, I want to make the point as well here that you guys probably know this already, but if you're seeing me for the first time, I am a physicist. I am not an expert in linguistics. Uh, if anyone has anything that they want to point out or clarify about what I've said, please do leave it in the comments. Um, just so we're clear, <laughs> this is not my field. But because of that, I do want to talk about some physics now, because we can talk about what physics says about time within some context. So, <laughs> the way that Arrival handles time, pretty speculative, but it is rooted in genuine questions that we still haven't answered. So in general relativity, time is part of a larger structure that we call space-time. It's not separate from space, it's just a dimension like any other. Now, depending on how fast you're moving or how much gravity you're in, time can stretch or shrink. So your experience of time isn't fixed, it's relative. Relativity. <laughs> More than that, though, the equations of general relativity don't care which direction time moves in because they will work just as well forwards as backwards. There is nothing in the math that says that the now, the present, is special or unique. And this leads to the block universe idea. Now this is a model where the past, present, and future all exist at once, like a map or a stack of like pages or something. And we're just like reading one page at a time or just taking one slice at a time. Now, if this were to be true, then the future already exists. And Louise in this model, in this block universe, isn't predicting what will happen. She's just gaining access to a part of the timeline that was always there, right? So far, so good. Except one major problem. Quantum mechanics comes along to ruin the day. You see, on the quantum scale, the future isn't 
fixed. It's probabilistic. Systems exist in multiple states at once and only collapse into one outcome when they're measured. So while relativity could imply that the future is already written, quantum mechanics says it's still up for grabs. Now these two models don't currently agree and uh, we don't know yet how to make them fit with each other. This is one of the biggest open questions in physics and until we figure it out we can't really say for sure or with any like real 100% confidence how time actually works. Not, not in this sense like or whether free will is a useful concept to us at all. Like I said, though, the block universe, it's, it's just a potential solution or it comes out in the math of general relativity, but that doesn't mean that it is a reality or that it actually exists and that that's how time works. We just don't know. But it definitely feels very sci-fi, for sure. So, does Louise have a choice? Well, no, not really. Not in the world that Arrival builds. She's not seeing possibilities, like different things that might happen in the future if she makes different choices. She's remembering certainties. It's just a memory that isn't optional. You don't choose to remember something, it's just something that happened. Now it's already a part of you and this is kind of what makes the film so heartbreaking in those final moments when you realize that there isn't anything she can do. She will just live through this. So this is why it's not a time travel story. It's actually a story about determinism. The idea that every event, every decision, every outcome was always going to happen. It was never possible for it to go any other way. Louise sees everything that's coming and she walks straight into it because she already did. Despite knowing the journey and where it leads, I embrace it. The future in Arrival isn't a blank space waiting to be written. It is already there, which means the real story isn't about stopping anything from happening. It's about accepting that even if you know how something is going to end, it can still be worth living through it. Like I said, I love this movie. I always kind of have this, I don't want to say feel good feeling when I watch it because I do actually find it very, very sad. But there's just something really beautiful about the way it's created. And personally for me, Denis Villeneuve is just one of my absolute top when it comes to science fiction movies, he's just like smashing it every time he does them. Arrival, Dune, uh, Blade Runner 2049. I can't wait to see what he is going to do in the future. So yeah, let me know what you thought of Arrival or if you have any thoughts about like time or determinism, free will. It, it, the movie has, it opens up a lot of discussions that we could have. I just think we need to remember that they are philosophical discussions or they're centered around like hypothesis or different ideas of what might be rather than the actual reality of what we know and understand right now. But also if this is the kind of, you know, like science meets story breakdown that you like, then, you know, follow me and recommend other topics or ideas that you might have that you would like me to look into. Happy to do so. Thanks for watching. Stay nerdy. Bye.